All right, everybody. This is chapter eight, section three. This is uh, trigonometry, um, which is what we did in section two with special right triangles. But those are only two right triangles that are or have a really unique relationship. Therefore, they're called special. But then we have all these infinite number of other right triangles that exist that don't have measurements of 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90. They will have an angle that's 90, but you have other different combinations, okay? So we have to do something uh, kind of unique with these. We have to be able to name the sides of a triangle. We're gonna use uh, a reference point of an angle to help us to do that. Um, obviously, a hypotenuse is a hypotenuse and always will be. The other two sides have specific names. Uh, one is opposite. One is adjacent. We know what those terms mean. We've used them before, but really important that we can be accurate with naming them because the sides that we use or need to find determine a, a specific trig function that we're going to need to use. Okay. So you have three of them. You have sine, cosine, tangent as the three different types of, of angles that we have. Okay, um, so this capital A here is representing the angle A over in the triangle to the right. Okay, so if you could draw that triangle, label it all up, you, you see that we have capital A's, B's, and C's, but then we have small A's, B's, and C's. Okay, so B, make sure you're being accurate with that. And then we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and write in all these uh, different ratios. Okay, so if you want to hit pause and do that, then come on back and I'll kind of explain and go over these, okay? Okay, so we're using a, a reference point. We have to be given it. Now, typically, uh, we're not given angle A. That, that A or angle will have a measurement, like 32 degrees or 12 degrees or 57 degrees, whatever. You'll be given an angle measurement, you're going to use that. But just to kind of kick this on, we're going to use letters. Okay, so we have to name all three sides. And you just need to get in the habit of this. You could probably do this in your sleep at some point, but right now, let's make sure. Um, I would just write these down so that you're ready to go and do this before you start anything. This is always going to be the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're just going to right off the bat. Since I'm using angle A, I'm going to draw an arrow straight across from A to the opposite side. So this side becomes the opposite side. And then I have a third side, it's the adjacent side. Well, it's kind of a process of elimination. This has to be the adjacent side, but let's remember what the word adjacent means. It means next to, in this case, it's next to the angle of my reference. So this side right here is adjacent to it. And I know the hypotenuse is adjacent to it also, but it's the hypotenuse because it's got that specific name. So don't mess, the, you know, don't try to mess that one up. It's always the hypotenuse, okay? So from these three sides, the trig trigonomic function sine is created by two specific sides. It's the opposite side over the hypotenuse, okay? So in this case, the opposite side from angle A is side A, and the hypotenuse is C, okay? Or you could write it as opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Now what you're gonna do is eventually here, you're gonna be, one of those is probably, you're probably gonna have a, a measurement of the length of that side. Could be the opposite side, could be the hypotenuse. And the other one's the one you have to find, okay? So we'll, we'll kind of see how we do that. For cosine, the trigonomic function cosine, now you're looking at it's created by the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, okay? So going back and looking at your reference, angle A, the adjacent side is B, and the hypotenuse is still C, okay? So now we're using a different side, it's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, okay? 
All right, and then the last one is tangent, which is kind of the oddball one, right? Because the, the first two used hypotenuse both times in the same place. Well, tangent doesn't have a hypotenuse, so hopefully that would help you a little bit remember how to set these up um, when you're trying to do these, okay? So tangent is created by the opposite side, A, to the adjacent side of A. So opposite side of A, angle A was A, the adjacent side to angle A is B, okay? So that's opposite over, over adjacent, okay? All right. So you, you got to know these, and there's that, that takes a little bit of time. I remember me doing this years and years ago. It, it took me a little while to do this, and we move a lot quicker than when I was in school. So you, you get some time to study it and make sure you got it, okay? So there's this little acronym, SOCATOA, okay? This is just a, you know, a way to hopefully kind of remember an acronym. Each letter stands for either a trig function or and or the sides, okay? So what I like to do with this is S stands for sine. So sine equals, and then the first letter is the numerator. So O stands for opposite. And the second letter is the denominator and it's the hypotenuse. It just helps you remember how to set up the different ratios, okay? So you could do that. A is adjacent, H is hypotenuse again, okay? Tangent, so first letter is tan, and O is opposite side again, A is the adjacent side again. So if you remember SOCATOA, and remember this is an A, sometimes kids will put an O in there just because of the way it sounds, but SOCATOA. It's just a, a you know way to kind of remember stuff. You have to have little gimmicks to to keep that memorized. Okay, so we need to make sure that when we get to a triangle, that we're labeling uh, specific sides and then being able to set up a a ratio. Okay, so on this one, uh, if you could draw that triangle, and we need to find the sine, cosine, and tangent. So some Sokotoa stuff. Okay, of the two angles that they have listed. So draw that up and, um, and then we'll come back and we'll get going, okay? All right, so first off, we're doing angle S and what they want is the sine, okay? The cosine and the tangent of angle S, okay? So we have to go to Sokotoa. And what, like I, what I said first is we should name all the sides. Now, uh, here's angle S, so that would be the opposite side. Here's the hypotenuse, okay? And therefore, this side has to be the adjacent side, okay? All right? Now, what I need is values here. The, the issue here is I don't have the opposite side. But remember, in a right triangle, we can do the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to call this x for a second. So we'll go x squared, 12 squared equals 13 squared. x squared and uh, is x squared. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. We're going to go ahead and subtract 144 from each side. I get 25. I'm going to take the square root of both sides and I get 5. So we had a little bit of work to do that. That's kind of a test question too. So the opposite side is 5. Okay. So remember sine is made up of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the opposite side has a measure of 5 and the hypotenuse has a measure of 13. Okay. So that's pretty easy, I hope. We just, that's all we got to do. And I can't reduce that. I'm done. Cosine then is made up of, going back to Sokotoa, cosine is made up of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is 12, and the hypotenuse is 13. Okay? So that's why it's important to kind of go name the sides because now I can just go pick them out and, and use them. Tangent of angle S is opposite over adjacent. So 
the opposite side of S is 5. The adjacent side is 12. Okay, so that's just creating a trigonomic ratio from that particular angle. Okay, but now they want me to go get R. So let's go ahead and do this. So sine of R, cosine of R, tangent of R. What's the R not a T? Okay. So now we got to be careful here because um, you know when you do trigono trigonomic functions, you have one angle as a reference point, and you need to name the sides from that reference point. Well, now they want me to look at the triangle from that angle, which is going to be different. First off, hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's not going to change. But opposite from angle R is going to be this side. So now it's no longer the adjacent side. Now I'm going to call it the opposite side. Okay, so you got to be careful with that. And I have to rename this side because now this side becomes adjacent to R. Okay, so, um, you know, that's not going to happen. We're not going to make you do two angles at the same time. We just want you to get um, the understanding. You got to name them, and there's a reason to name them certain things. You got to understand how to do that. Okay, so let's go back to sine of angle R. The opposite side now is 12. For the trig function is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side is now 12. The hypotenuse is still 13. Okay. Cosine of R is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So now the adjacent side is 5. Hypotenuse is still 13. And then looking at tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side of R is 12. And the adjacent side is 5. Okay. So... That's just a good little practice of how to name sides and create create your uh, different trig ratios. Okay, so just uh, practice on kind of how to name them and, and understand where they're at and what to do with them. Okay, all right. So those those will be a little kind of like quiz questions or like the beginning of a test just to kind of get you going. Make sure you know how to do that. All right. Okay, going here, we're going to find the trig ratios of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So for 45 degrees, um, let's just really quick, I'm just going to draw this. I'm going to show that these are going to be equal because that's what happens in a 45, 45, 90 triangle. Okay. Okay. So the sine of 45. Okay, they want me to get all three. So sine of 45, um, I'll, use, I'll use this angle right here. So the sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So it's x over x square root of 2. These would cancel out. I'm left with this. Okay, but I can't leave it that way. So multiply both the top and the bottom by that. Okay. And I get square root of 2 over 2. All right. So cosine 45. Now, if you're really smart, you know that both the sides are the same. And whatever, that you're going to get the opposite, the adjacent side to the same angle is still going to be x over still the hypotenuse, doesn't it? Kind of make sense that I should get the same answer for cosine, but let's just do it. So these are going to cancel out. I'm left with one over square root of two. I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to get the same answer for that. So hopefully that makes sense to you because if the if the um, legs are the same, then the ratio should be the same. Okay, and then for tangent. Remember, tangents the opposite over the adjacent. Well, the opposite side is x. 
the adjacent side is x, and x divided by x gives me 1. Okay, I forgot to put the 45 in there, sorry. Okay, so there you go. For the 30, 60, 90, well, let's draw that again. This is just good practice for that stuff we had here. I'll say that's the 30 degree angle. So this is the short side. This is the hypotenuse. And this is the long way. Okay. So using those ratios. Okay. So we're going to go sine of 30 degrees. Okay. So remember, um, we're going to use this angle. So this is going to be the opposite side now. This is always the hypotenuse. So this, therefore, has to be the adjacent leg. Okay? All right. So for sine, it's going to be the opposite side is x over the hypotenuse. Okay? The, the x's will cancel each other out. So on top, I'm left with 1. And I have a 2 on the bottom, so 1 half. All right? Cosine of 30 is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay. The, the x's again cancel each other out, and I'll be left with on top the square root of 3, and on the bottom just 2. Now I can leave it like that. The numerator can't have a radical in it, just not the denominator, okay? Last one is the tangent. Okay, tangent's the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is x square root of 3. The x's will cancel each other out, so on top I'm left with 1. But on the bottom, now i got a radical, so I've got to fix that. Okay, so I'm going to go multiply by the square root of 3, multiply by the square root of 3. I get the square root of 3 over 3. Okay. So that's using those again um, and getting the ratios, okay? Now, that's because I'm leaving them in simplified radical form. It told me not to use a calculator up here, okay? So that's why we did all that. And a calculator, what you would do, you would, in this case, you would hit, um, get a different color here for a second. Let's erase this too. Okay, so in a calculator, I'd hit sine 45. Okay, I'd hit the sine button, hit 45 degrees, or punch in 45, and then hit equals, and it would give me some decimal value to represent that. Same thing with cosine. I hit cosine button, I punch in 45, I hit equals, and it would give me the same number because they're the same. Okay, and then I do it for tangent. Okay, but tangent, it ended up being 1, and that's what you would get. You get tangent 45, it would give you a, an answer of 1. Okay, same thing here if I hit sine of 30, so if sine punch in the number 30, it would give me a decimal of 0.5 for that. And if I did it for cosine of 30, and I punched in cosine and punched in 30, it would give me a decimal answer for this, which would be about something less than one. Okay. And then for tangent, I'd hit tangent 45, I keep forgetting, or 30, I'm sorry. Okay. And it would give me uh, some decimal answer for that, which is probably less than one also. Okay. Now we're going to learn how to use our calculators, okay? And some calculators are different, so we just need to make sure that um, if you have any issues, please ask for some help, and we, you know, it takes like two minutes to figure it out so you know how to use yours, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm given an angle reference, all right? So now that we're getting into real trig. We've done a lot just to get here, but here we are. Here's my angle, and I'm given two sides, and I should name them. Okay, so obviously that will be the hypotenuse. And this should be the opposite side. So now I'm kind of, I'm, 
I'm just naming those two sides because that's what they gave me and that's what I need to find. So I got to figure out which trig function is it. So remember it's, it's sine, cosine or tangent is what I have to choose from, but I'm looking for the one that, that has both the opposite and hypotenuse in it. So hopefully you look at your notes and you go, hey, it's sine. So I need to write the, the trig function. I'm using the angle that they gave me. In this case, it's 28 degrees. And it equals the ratio of the opposite side. So that's 14 over the hypotenuse. In this case, is D. Okay, so that's, this is where we have to really be at. This is more of what you're going to do. Okay. So what you're going to do is in your calculator now, you're, I'm going to put in my trig function. So the one I have now is sine. So I'm going to hit sine. I'm going to punch in the angle they gave me, 28, and then you're going to hit equal. Okay. That's how the calculators that I have in our classroom work. Some, some calculators will have you put your, your measurement in first and then your trig function. It just kind of depends. So play with it and see what you get. Also, your calculator needs to be in a, the mode degree. So you'll probably see that somewhere on your screen or maybe even a, just a capital D. Okay. If it's not, it's going to do something else. It's stat stuff. So make sure it's in there. If the, everything's correct, um, depending on how you would input it, you should have got, we're going to go out to the fourth decimal place. So I'm going to get four, six, nine, four, seven. The seven is going to make me round the four up one to that. Equals 14 over D. Okay. So um, why do you go out to four places? Well, trigonometry is a, a really specific kind of um, scientific math where we're looking for things that are really, really, really accurate. So you're looking like, you know, uh, uh, like your, your people that work on like the rockets and the satellites that go off into space that when they're creating those things, they just gotta be super accurate because of the pressures those things are under and the atmospheres they're in and stuff like that. The more accurate you get, the better it's gonna be built. So going out to the fourth place is kind of, um, you know, look, really looking at it's super good accuracy, okay? What I'm gonna do now is just create a proportion and do diagonally, I'm gonna diagonally multiply this out, okay? I'm gonna get this. Just, you know, we've done proportions last chapter. It shouldn't be anything new. Um, this is how we're going to solve it, okay? I'm going to divide both sides by 0. 0.4695. Okay, and these are just going to cancel each other out here. I'm going to be left with D. Now, you got to be careful here, too. Use some common sense. I'm trying to find the hypotenuse. Okay, they gave me the, the short leg or, or what I would call a shorter leg. So my hypotenuse has to be the longest leg. So my answer better be more than 14. Okay, so use some common sense on these because um, you're going to stick this into your calculator and we do this backwards occasionally. So first off, it's 14 divided by 0.4695. Okay, so make sure you put that in right and then I get you know, 29.818 something, but typically we're going to work just for us, we're going to round it to the nearest tenth. So I get that. Okay. So if you got something that's less than 14, because if you put that in backwards, you would get something less than 14 and people go, well, that's what my calculator said, but remember you put it in wrong, so it's not going to fix it for you. Use some common sense. Remember the rules about right triangles, okay? All right, so I'm gonna have you guys try this next one. It's a little bit different, so kind of follow what I did. Uh, name the size with what you have and what you need to find according to the angle that you got. 
Um, use that to pick your trig function and then set it up like I did and then go ahead and solve it. Okay. So you can hit pause and do that and then come back. I'm going to start solving. Okay. All right. This is my angle of, of uh, reference. This is my hypotenuse. Okay. This would be the opposite side, but they're not asking me to do anything with it. They didn't give it to me. So this has to be the adjacent side. Okay, so I have the hypotenuse. I need to get the adjacent and go back to my trig functions. Which trig function has those two sides? And hopefully you've selected cosine. So cosine of the angle, this is 18 degrees, is the, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. We went into our calculator and I hit cosine, I hit 18, I hit equals, and I got 0 0.9511, and that's rounding, equals x over 42. Okay. So if I remind myself of, hey, I've got proportions, I'm going to diagonally multiply, 1 times x is x. And then I'm going 0 0.9511 times 42 because you're multiplying here, okay? And that's going to get me, hold on a second here. Thirty-nine point nine. Okay. Now I going back. How do I know I'm right? Okay. Now remember, they gave me the hypotenuse, which has to be the longest leg, which means whatever I get has to be shorter than that. Did we get something that was shorter than forty-two? We did. So I'm gonna kind of feel like I did that correctly. Okay. Just a simple little check using rules that we already know. Okay. All right. okay, solving a right triangle, this is a kind of common sense here, but solving a right triangle is just getting all the angles and all the side measurements for whatever triangle you're doing, okay? Inverse trig functions, this is the second part of trig that we know. We're going to use trig then to find angle measurements when they don't give it to us, okay? We're going to use the sides and we kind of, we're using trigonometry basically backwards if you want to think of it that way. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to, they're just going to give us some trig functions to play with our calculator here, okay? So what I want to do is take all these, if they're not in a decimal form, change them to a decimal form first, okay? So the first one, they're messing with us. Tangent, this would have been opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side is 7 and the adjacent side is 10. That will give me a decimal of 0.7, okay? Now, once again, this is a calculator thing, depending on what the calculators or how they're set up. And once I have in my classroom, when we want to do inverse trig functions, we have to you might want to write this down. You're going to hit the second function button at the top. You're going to pick the trig function. So whichever one you've decided to use or they tell you to use. Okay. And then you're going to put in your decimal. And then you hit equals. And that should give you some something rounded to the tenth. When we can do these angles, we typically go to the tenth on our decimal, okay? So let's do this first one. They, they're telling me to use tangent, so I'm going to go second function in my calculator, second function, tangent, and the decimal was 0.7. I hit equals, and it gives me an angle uh, or a, a measure of 34.99 which if I wanted to round that properly, it would give me 35 degrees, okay? Now, some calculators will have you um, go like, uh, put in the, the decimal, so in this case, 0.7, then they have a little, um, uh, uh, like a 
tangent with a little negative one as an exponent. And that's one thing I kind of forgot to say. When you put in this trig function tan, in this case tan, you should get the trig function with the little negative one. If you if, when you see that, you know you, you set up your calculator right to do the, the function. Okay. Some other calculators make you do all the work first and then go to this, you know, get something like that. We'll just we'll when we work together, well, if you have any issues, then I can work with you on that. Okay. All right, so let's do uh, example B. So they gave me sine, they already gave it to me in decimal form. So second function, sine 0.9, and then hit equals, and it gets me 64.15, but I'm gonna round that to 64.2. Degree. So remember when you're doing inverse functions for your trig, it's helping you find the angle measures. Okay. All right. So why don't you guys try this on your own for the last two? You've got this one tangent. Remember, it's kind of the funky when you get some really weird numbers with that. And then you got a cosine. So we're we're finding using the second function. Make sure you know you should get tangent to the negative one. You should get cosine to the negative one before you put in your decimal, okay? So if you want to hit pause, do those, and then I'll do these real quick, okay? So second function, tangent, we're going to put in 5.4, and that's going to get me 79.5 degrees, okay? Second one, we're going second function, cosine 0.1, and that's going to get me 84.26, so I'm going to round it to 84.3, okay? All right, so that's using inverse trig. Um, just kind of learn how to use your calculator. So now let's go ahead and draw these two figures and kind of show you uh, how to solve for right triangles and how to use uh, inverse trig. Okay. So if you want to hit pause and do that, I'm going to get started here. The other, the other thing too, when you're using multiple, you know, inverse trig functions, you're, you're probably only going to really use one at a time. But in that case, we did four in a row. You still, every time you got to put your calculator in a second function, it's not going to stay there until you take it out. As soon as you hit equals to get an answer, it's kind of gone. You got to make sure you redo it each time. Okay. All right. So solving a, a triangle, remember you're finding all the sides. Okay. And all the angles. So in this case, I got two sides and I got one angle. It's 90 and they kind of had to tell me that. So I know it's a right triangle. So simple thing, uh, here's the hypotenuse, so I'll just label it for right now. Okay, simple thing to find that side is just use Pythagorean theorem since they gave me two sides, okay? So I'm going to go 2 squared, 3 squared equals c squared, okay? So 4 plus 9 is c squared, 13. Take the square root of both sides, okay? Um, in this case, I'll let you guys go ahead and get just a, a, a decimal answer. So you're going to go square root 13, and that gets you about 3.6. I say about because it kind of keeps on going, but we'll round it to that. Okay. So that's the third side. That's cool. But now I got to find the angles. Okay. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with B. Right, and I'm going to take the two sides they gave me. So I got to name them. Remember, I already named this guy the hypotenuse. So the side here, two is going to be the opposite side, and three is going to be the adjacent side. Okay, so I'm going to use those two. Even though I have the hypotenuse, I don't I don't like to use it because it's a decimal, right? So I'm going to use these whole numbers. So name the trig function. Which trig function has both the opposite and adjacent side in it? Go back and look at your Sokotoa. Hopefully you got tangent. 
the angle I used was B. And then I'm getting a opposite over the adjacent side. Two over three. Now what I need to do here, it's kind of like that first example just above. I need to get a decimal. It's not in decimal form, okay? So in your calculator, two divided by three is going to give you 0.6 repeating, all right? And so we're going to go 0 0.6667. Go out to the fourth place. Okay, so I have to change it to a decimal first. All right, you didn't give it to me this time. All right, so now in your calculator, we got to find the angle. So remember, it's inverse trig. Got to use second function. The trig function I had was tangent. The measurement or the equivalent I have is 0.667. And that gets me 33.69. It keeps on going, but I'll round this now to 33.7 degrees. Okay. Now, what I could do then is go angle A and, and rename the sides and do a trig function. But remember that angle A and angle B should equal 90 degrees, okay? Since I already have, you know, an angle that's 90. So what I, what, what the easiest way to do to find angle A is just take what angle B is, subtract it from 90, and that will get me A. Okay, so remember this was B. Forgot about that. This is B. Okay, so 90 minus that should get me 56.3. So angle A equals 56.3. Okay. So I found the third side by doing Pythagorean theorem. I found one of the angles by doing inverse trig. I found the third angle by just subtracting my first angle from 90 and I got it. Okay. So that's solving a right triangle. All three angle measure, measures are known, and all three sides are known, okay? All right, so I'm going to let you uh, go ahead and try B. Um, I'll, you can hit pause and get that. You're going to start off with using trigonometry. Name the sides first using this angle as your reference point, um, and then find you're going to find angle G, and then you're going to find sides G and H, okay? And use trig to find both G and H. Don't use Pythagorean theorem after you get the first one, so get some practice in, okay? So you can hit pause, and then I'll, I'm going to start doing the solution, all right? Okay, first thing I'm going to do is, is find angle G, because that's got to be the easiest. If this is 25, uh, H and G together should equal 90. So angle G is going to be 65 degrees. So hopefully you kind of understood that, okay? I'm going to name the sides. This is my hypotenuse. Using this angle, this will be my opposite side. And so therefore, this has to be adjacent, okay? And I could kind of choose where to go. I'm just going to find the opposite side first. And they gave me the hypotenuse. so. Opposite and hypotenuse together, they create, you know, using your Sokotoa, it creates sine. The angle I used was 25. The opposite side is H, and the hypotenuse is 13. Okay. In my calculator, what it gave me for sine of 25 was 0.4226 H over 13. Okay, remember I'm going to just do my diagonally multiply here. So 1 times h is h, and 0.4226 times 13 should give me something less than 13. So using common sense, hey, is my answer right? Remember, I have the hypotenuse, so each answer i got to find for g and h should be less than that. And it gets me about 5.5 with that being rounded, okay? Okay. Now, 
I could then just do Pythagorean theorem to get G. Since I got the hypotenuse and, and I'll call it the A side is 5.5, I could do Pythagorean theorem. But let's not, let's get better at what we're doing, okay? Now I got to find side G. I'm still going to use this angle 25 as my reference point. So side G is, I said angle G, side G is the adjacent side. Still, I'm going to still use the hypotenuse, even though I have the opposite side. I'll still use the hypotenuse. I don't like to use the decimals. So adjacent hypotenuse, go to your Sokotoa. I believe that gets me cosine 25 degrees. The, op, the adjacent side is G and the hypotenuse is 13, okay? So once again, go to your calculator, cosine 25 degrees, get that as an equivalent is 0 0.9063 equals G over 13, okay? So this is a 13 down here. Okay, do your cross products. So one times G is G. Remember, I'm getting, I'm trying to get a number that's less than 13. So you're multiplying here. So 0 0.9063 times 13 gives me about 11.8, and that's being rounded. Okay, and I've solved my right triangle. I've got the two missing sides. I did have one missing angle. We got it at 65. And I got all six pieces, okay? All right, so uh, that's trigonometry. You know, I, I've given, I usually give a bunch of different extra worksheets besides what's just in the book. Um, please, um, these do take some time. And we, I need you to put the time in to get good at it. It's, if once you kind of get a good rhythm into it, these are not hard. There's not a whole lot to kind of look at, so please just make sure you put in some time and, and work hard at it. And also, if you've got an issue, please come and talk to me and we'll get it fixed. Okay, now I usually this this section I split it into just regular trig and then the inverse trig stuff and solving right triangles, but I put it all in one, so sometimes we'll split this up. Uh, just make sure that, I know it took a long time, just make sure that you take good notes and go back and study, okay?